Welcome back to another episode of RPG Love Picking Up the Pixels, the show about JRPGs and kind of similar related games. We're going to talk about visual novels <laughs> a lot. I'm your host, Boston and joining me as always is Musim. Hello. And Mina. Hi. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones or numbers. I never remember to plug it on the show, so uh, for two or five dollars a month you get a whole bunch of cool early access behind the scenes and secret stuff so go check it out patreon.com slash e1m1 musim let's start with you what have you been playing this past week month so <laughs> period of time <laughs> just this week yeah Not the other yeah. um <laughs> that that's about how january has been i've just been yeah coma i have played a bunch of stuff though okay um, played one game a whole lot and a bunch of other games a little bit so um after last cast i went and played like another week or so in fire emblem houses mm. um and i've decided i'm just going to take a break from it it says i've clocked <laughs> 40 hours into it like i'm not oh my gosh i'm not necessarily like i'm still not to the schism yet so i i'm going to guess at least a fourth of that is um is pause time right except i'm i, I guess the nintendo switch probably would go to sleep like it goes to sleep faster than the other consoles so maybe i'm wrong there but um i don't know but i i think i just needed a simple dumb mash a button game and luckily i'd accidentally bought one in december that is related (laughs) called fire emblem warriors right Uh, oh there we go (laughs) so it's always fun playing like the uh the dynasty games like for these series because almost all of them are the same and that for some reason sorry i thought i heard something crash um <laughs> swear a dog was destroying something but for some reason uh they're always like here are all these different uh continuities who have nothing to do with each other there's going to be a magic thing that sucks them all in they're gonna have to fight but before they can fight <laughs> like be friends they're gonna fight they're gonna declare they're gonna fight and then you're gonna wind up on a battlefield where you have to control different sections of the battlefield before you can actually fight the person who is just wanting to fight you which right makes like an extra weird like funny situation to me in my head because it's like <laughs> the schoolyard bully threatening you then running away and right <laughs> you having go to mobs or whatever but um this is a pretty typical uh is it Koei? Are they the company? I think. Yeah, a Muso game. Yeah, this is a pretty typical Muso game. Yeah, um, I'd I'd put it in the same basket as like a Gundam. Um, you know, each mission you get a new character or two. Uh, it does, however, have skill trees for all the characters, which I really like. Oh, cool. Um, I kind of just mindlessly go in and buy all the skills, though. It's not like a. Yep. <laughs> Diablo skill tree where you get locked or a Diablo 2 skill tree where you get locked out of something. It's right. um, just a get everything type tree. But um, it's kind of cool also because, you know, mo- the first few missions, all your units are on foot and then you get your first guy on a on a horse. I forgot his name. Um, and then you get uh, you eventually get someone on a Pegasus and like they have this land manipulation thing, too, where Pegasus can basically hop over giant holes it's not like a jumping mechanic it's just a uh like a quick time kind of mechanic oh okay um but it allows you to you know get it to other areas on the map but the like the thing i like about those games aside from being like good brain dead stuff is like the battlefield control stuff i, I still think has a lot of potential um because if you haven't ever played one like they send like you know thousands of guys at you and you know one swing from your sword kills like 10 of them Mm -hmm. but (laughs) the like each field has like troop generators and you have to defeat the captain in that field to take over over and then your guys will be there but the enemy units will have heroes and things which can retake there so you'll have like four or five characters you can switch between on the battlefield and so you'll basically be command it's almost like a pseudo really easy rts and that you're commanding your troops to go to certain locations Mm. and the one you're controlling is probably going to be the only one that takes over anything but at least the others can soften up the areas or guard areas or whatnot but um anywho uh, i played that a little bit you know it's fine um it did make me just kind of long more for them to officially announce the persona one that's going to be released here 
Um, well, I have good news for you in the releases section. <laughs> oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then my other wish is, uh, I know everyone liked dogpiling on the, the Gundam ones, but I really liked those and would really enjoy a new one, especially with all the crazy new suits that we've gotten out of like iron blooded orphans and uh, a unicorn and all that. Uh, Especially so since got- they seem to have figured out a lot of the rights issues. Cause like during the PS2 era, it's like, well, yeah, we'd love to bring these Gundam games over, <gasps> but uh, like 10 people own these licenses and uh, we can't do that. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. It, it was, it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. And those games, Almost every Gundam game is worth, like, like those games don't devalue. I'll put it that oh, way. Right. Like a lot of those um, animes that came out during that time period have had that same problem. You may wonder why there was never like at its height the Sailor Moon games. You mm. may wonder like why wasn't there ever a Sailor Moon game? Right. Holy smokes! Yeah. At the people who held all the rights. Yep. There will never be one. Yep. Good luck. Yeah, like the oh. ones that came out were like early Super NES Sailor Moon games, and those are good, but never again. I mean, those weren't released here, though, were they? No, were no. Yeah. No. I was about to say, because no. I played a little bit of the RPG one back in the day with like a hacked ROM type yeah. thing. Yeah, that was, a good, that was a good game. Fan translation? But, pretty pretty yeah. much all of those games, though, are like under so many, like, yep. well, not just those games, but like the 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 whole, like, like those Gundam games, Sailor Moon, like anything from that time period is just like mm-hmm. 10, 15 companies own the rights. And it's just like now it's, and they will fight for it. Yeah. N- not even a bother. Yep. That's frustrating. Yeah. Well, and Gundam is kind of Gundam fandom on state side. Like, I, I don't necessarily want to say the fandoms died out, but like, you know, since Adult Swim stopped showing Gundam stuff, or at mm. least I don't think they have in a long time, like. Most of their state's popularity were because they showed Wing back in the day. Right. So I love that. <laughs> yeah. Showing it on Toonami. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, how many people learned about various animes through there? Like, I mm-hmm. I wanted to be a Gundam fan, and then they showed that on TV, and I got to see it, and then I started hunting down everything I could. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is actually really good. All right. <laughs> Funny story. There are like 50 series in Gundam, and oh, I have not yeah. seen them all because there's, there's so too many. many. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, FE, okay. whatever the Switch version Sharp. came out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I haven't started this yet. I've uh, another RPG I'm playing has turned out to be way longer than I was expecting. Well, and I haven't played it a ton. Like I turned it on, and like just the music and presentation of that game makes me feel good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, gosh, it's it's such an upbeat and positive game that just has ridiculous crap in it. Uh, yep. <laughs> I, I really look forward to playing through it again. But uh, so this is the only game I've played that's okay. an RPG this month, um, mm. Tokyo Mirage Session. So I'm gonna have to join in on you with this one. Yeah. Well, and I don't have a ton to say because I just got past the. Uh, the initial dungeon, and okay. I'm about to go start my training with what's his name. And then I thought, eh, I really want to play something else. So, what are your thoughts on it? So, I know, I, I know, I definitely played this on when it was on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. But my memory of it on the Wii U is pretty much non-existent. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I feel like I've got amnesia that I've just forgotten everything. Um, so I've. I made it to I, I I finished the first like actual dungeon, the one where you have like the the maid outfits or the clothes mm. that move their arms up and whatever and you crawl through their arm sleeves to go Yeah. To different floors. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> it's pretty weird in game too, so yeah. Um. Okay. So um to to no one's surprise I am playing this on the hardest difficulty. Yep. Um, so you did that last time too. I remember that. I do I? remember okay. that. Yeah. All right. So I did it again, right. and I don't. I probably didn't have the same thing happen to me the first time. I died on the first random encounter. Um, not the first encounter that you have the boss fight. Right. That like was, the first dungeon like, encounter. Yeah, the first boss thing. I don't think 
you'd have to really try to lose, I feel. Um, but, like, the first, like, random enemy moving around on the screen, I died to that. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, so I've set the stage now on yeah. why this is going to be difficult. Oh, um, man. So the the thing that always gets me, like, 100% of the time, the reason why I've died, I've died probably three or four times now in, in the game. What gets me every single time is, like, there will be, like, a bunch of enemies that spawn, and they'll hit one of my party's weaknesses, and they'll just go into, like, this again and again and oh, again. Like, right. they, they're, like, three enemies join in. And it's like, well, only two of you really need to hit me to knock me <laughs> down into critical. <laughs> right. So the third guy who joins in is just like, you're dead. And so it's like, okay, so we can't let that happen. So my strategy in playing this game is probably more focused on, okay, I need to eliminate the the units that are going to expose the weaknesses, or I need to thin them out so that way the ones that join in are less plentiful. Ah, uh, right. So, like, I think normally you would be like, well, I gotta get rid of this mage enemy because the mage enemy does so much damage. But it's kind of like, yeah, but it's this one might not join in on anybody's, like, you know, crit attack. Right, um, or like you start your own chain by attacking this other right. weak dude. Right. Right. And and that's uh and and there are times where you would think I would opt to go for the one that chains with my the rest of my party, but I'm just kind of like if I do that, I just leave myself up to being like one shot by the the group of enemies by right. trying to take down one that doesn't matter. So it's a very interesting strategy that I'm pretty sure, like, if you're playing on the hardest difficulty, this is the this is the strategy you go for. Versus if you're on like the easiest difficulty, you're probably just like whatever gets the most of my people. Yeah, I'm gonna try in. some stuff out. Right. Yeah. yeah. So a, I hate to break to you. There's a lot of walking back and forth in the dungeons oh, in this game. Oh my god. Mm. So like, cause this game, like, their tactic for the Wii U second screen was we're gonna put the map on this screen. <laughs> And all our dungeons are going to be based around pulling a lever on the map that opens a yeah. different path and closes uh, another path. And it's right. so confusing. Like, when oh, I no. pulled those levers, especially like, that first dungeon was the taste of, I have to remember, like, like without looking at a map, my brain has to be like, okay, I need to think about, like, how this building is shaped so right. that way I'm I'm doing the right thing on opening which floor up. And I'm does, like, this is only going to get worse. <laughs> does the pause menu have a map that you can look it, at? It does, but it's just kind of like... Is it's, it a pain to get so in there? Much, it's so much information. Like, yeah. you're just trying to follow it all. So there is a map, but it's kind of like... The map also doesn't really display very well what I... What I I hate 3D maps, mm. but I feel like this is one of those times where I'm like, I could really use a 3D map to look at. <laughs> Show right me the, now. the floors from a side, mm. like right. stack them all up. Yeah. So, um, thankfully, because that whole walking back and forth thing, holy smokes! Because like, especially when you get, when you don't have like the the materials to keep up with the the zone like walking through it and stuff and you're just like i don't have enough money i don't have enough um thank you <clears throat> i don't have enough money and i don't have enough um like healing items and stuff healing items and, and it's just kind of like oh my gosh it's so awful so the thing that thankfully they give you pr pretty early on is that you learn these abilities and so like there's like an early and by the way the second you can unlock these what i forget what the they're called unities. The second mm. you can unlock a unity, it's just like, well, I'm leaving to go unlock that <laughs> unity right now. Gotta go. Right now. Because, like, the first unity you get is, like, you know when you have, like, a chain combo where you're, like, you're like oh, I did fire, and now somebody's like, okay, I get to join in with my spear attack. And someone's <clears> like, okay, I get to join in with my wind attack or whatever the heck they're doing. Um, So, like, that sort of thing. Well, until you unlock this one unity, they just overkill a monster. Then you get this unity that's like, okay, instead of overkilling a monster, just like wasting everybody's turn on it, like dump that off on a different monster. So, ah, uh, so okay. that's like a unity that I got early on. And then, um, I also got the ability to teleport back to, like, to leave a dungeon instantly and teleport back to your 
your base or whatever. Ooh. Um, and that, like, basically a permanent go home right. to right. A, a unit. And thank goodness for that, because I have to use that so, so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, and then oh, they add ahead. new, like, basically every dungeon, I think they add, like, another some other combat mechanic or unity or something that makes that's a quality of life thing so yeah mm. thank goodness because let me tell you walking out of the dungeons until you get that is a bane <laughs> a real haul it is, it is it destroyed me just trying to do it and then thankfully like the the first real dungeon that you go to they introduced the whole teleport pads that let you um Um, jump back to a a different floor Mm. so that way you don't have to walk through the entire thing because that was like i probably tried to climb this thing three or four times and each time i got to a certain point to be like i am out of all resources Mm. i have to leave because i cannot continue and then i just barely make it to a teleport pad i'm like oh thank goodness okay (laughs) i'm safe (laughs) (laughs) and then i can jump back to this teleport pad and and you know continue the climb up um they do have save game plus i'm just throwing that out there (laughs) Mm. okay yeah yeah but we know I'm going to do this on the I hardest know. difficulty. I <laughs> I'm going to make this work. Yeah. Um, so I have died probably three or four times. And um, like I said, the first one was to the first random encounter that I just, I was not prepared for. I think like the second time I died was to a savage enemy, which was something they introduced in the second or the the first dungeon that's, a real dungeon and not the tutorial dungeon or whatever we want to call that. Mm-hmm. So the first proper dungeon, they introduced the the savage enemy and um which is basically like it's an FOE basically. It's it's not even an FOE, it's just like a a uh group of like it'll it might have just like the same enemies as the the floor proper, but it'll be like yeah, we're going to have like five or six of these jerks. Instead oh. of you're just normal, like, oh, there's only two or three. Now it's, like, five or six, and it's like, whoa, and okay. they'll be way harder, and they'll have, like, way more health or way more defense or something, and you're just, like, and you have to use the 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 session or whatever. I don't, is it called? I don't, the terminology I do not have yet. <laughs> right. I'll get it the next step, next, uh, next pup. But, um... There's the thing, the meter that you build up, and you can expend that meter to do, like, a super strong attack. Oh, right. I think that is the session meter. Okay, so, all right. So, that thing right there, you have to, um, you have to use, especially, well, have to on the hardest difficulty. And sometimes it doesn't even outright kill a monster. Sometimes it just softens it, and it's just like, oh, it's so tough. (laughs) So tough. Yeah. Um. And for the longest time while I was going through the dungeon, um, because you need materials from the monsters to drop, it seemed like I was never learning enough abilities or whatever. And it just, oh my goodness. I know this will get, I know that aspects of this will get better the further I play the game. Mm -hmm. But I also know that the aspects that I um, am not loving, which is the map. Right. And, uh, and and that cannot get better because that like this is only the first dungeon and it's already like wow so yeah. um <clears throat> I I actually finished that one um surprisingly it only took me two attempts to take down the the boss of that oh, that nice. area uh, I was really happy with that because I thought for sure I'd I'd need more but I I was a lot more careful like the first time i I battled the the boss because the boss summons like two ads that are horrible because they join in and they join in the the uh you know the attack oh the ability that i found out the most used for of course lowering defense raising your defense raising your attack lowering like gotta keep that up yep 100 percent of the time like that's that's like maximum upkeep whenever i go up against like if there's too many enemies on the screen i'm gonna have to waste some turns just like buffing and debuffing which yeah. is, i'm sure is just like it's like that those abilities you probably don't ever use unless you're playing on a harder difficulty mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's You're like, like, why would I want to poison a boss? Who like, what? That? Who You're cares? Just kill it. Yeah. <gasps> Poisoning the boss. Yeah. I forgot. Holy smokes. So poison hurts like crazy in this game. Yeah, like, that's so the stuff. I don't, my, well, like, not just on the boss, but on yourself. Like, if you get poison oh, no. on you, get it off immediately. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Holy smokes. Like, I don't remember how much health you have, but it, like, poison takes off a third of your health. Whoa. And that's, it's, like, it's so insane. I was like, is this okay? Right. Who allowed this? Right. Is this a bug? <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it doing so much damage? So, of wow. course, whenever I got the opportunity to poison, um, you know, enemy boss or whatever, I'm like, I'm taking that opportunity. And it it chunks enemies. So, nice. I'm like, well, at least, at least if you do it to me, you allow me to do it to you. Yeah. You know? that That's... That's that's called balance. Right. <laughs> it's, it's very much a Shimogami Tensei game and that mm. you can, like, it's, I, I don't know. I guess that's always been my experience with those games. I guess Persona's probably a little less concentrated on that, but they're always yeah. all about, like, raising your offense, lowering enemy offense. Yeah. This enemy's going to yeah. kill you unless you lower their offense. Nocturne and, okay. is famous for that with the Matador fight. It's like, yeah. hey, if you don't know deep buffs and debuffs, you're you're not going to make it through this fight. Gosh, that is a required fight, and I remember that being that was like your <clears throat> that was the moment in the game where you say, "Am I really going to play through this game or not?" <laughs> right? Is it going to break me here? It's uh, I I'm in, I'm enjoying it. I like I like when the combat's brutal. I only do this with games I love. Like yeah. I would never do this with a game I I knew I wasn't gonna love. But like SMT games, Persona games, like give me the max difficulty. It's fine if it hurts me. I enjoy right. <laughs> right. this game enough. <laughs> right. Um. So it it makes the game last longer for me, and um. I also like just experiencing the, the battle systems when it's when it's harder. Yeah. Um. I forgot how. The what is the word I'm looking for? So this is probably uh, something that kind of turns people away from this game because it's probably the same thing that turns people away from um, Ten Two. The campiness. Um, Ten Two. The campiness. Yeah. I, it's having I, fun. I can, I can have fun with a game like this because yeah. I I don't that it never bothered me like. I know some people will will say like Ten Two had like a horrible story. Boo. Ten Two does not have a horrible story. It's actually pretty on par. Yeah. It's the campiness. Yeah, it's having made. fun. So this game wants to have fun. It wants to be silly and goofy and just ridiculous because it it is ridiculous. Yeah, there's there's nothing about this game that isn't ridiculous. I feel um, like if you read the description for the game, you aren't allowed to complain at, right. after buying it. Like, <laughs> right. You were buying a game where you're going to be teen <clears throat> idols, right? and the fighting system <laughs> is going to be you performing in front of, like, weird monster crowds. Like, And I, yep. I feel like some people ignore that part and say, like, oh, it's a mashup of Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem. It's like, I mean, technically, but... <laughs> Not in the way that you're expecting it to be. It's, I'm right, sure like, Crom's in it, but yeah, like Crom <laughs> shows like up. Crom. It's, yeah, it's more like cosplay for a real right. weird SMT game. Yeah, it's like you just you're wearing their <laughs> costumes, and it's a, it's a yeah. costume pack, but that's about it. Because the like the the Fire Emblem aspects of it, it's like it's so. It's so lightly sprinkled in there mm-hmm. that if you were coming in from like a Fire Emblem standpoint, I imagine you would be like, "What is this?" I finished Fire <laughs> Emblem Three Houses and I'm ready for more. It's like n- this isn't that's this isn't it. <laughs> no. But it's it's at the same time it's also not like SMT either. So it's, it's right. This kind of reminds me of that that whole like Persona Q sort of thing where it's yeah. like the Etrian Odyssey people came into it going like I want Etrian Odyssey and the Persona people came into it like I want Persona and it's like this is not going to please <laughs> it's, everyone. It's, it's really neither. It's it's neither and it's wonderful but you have to take it in for what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's going to make only me happy. Right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I- um, I love this game so much. I hope people give it a try. The uh, I I still need to get back to it and start seeing whatever the new content they added was. I'm sure. Yeah. It's, I, I haven't gotten to any new stuff yet. I I hope it's beyond just the 
we added the swimsuit or whatever costumes that were previously censored out. I hope it's beyond yeah, that. I, I think it's, a, if I remember correctly, it's new event scenes and a whole new dungeon and a whole bunch of other little stuff. Like, sort of you know, sprinkled along the way. I'm not even going to notice what's new because I don't even remember right. the stuff I'm talking it's about. It's a brand new game for the, the second time. <laughs> yeah. That's if awesome. only I could do this with other games. Like, right. just, like can, can I displace my memory of the entire... Um, Zero Escape series yeah. because I would love to just like brainwash that out and play mm-hmm. that again. I'll do it again. Yeah, <laughs> I've forgotten most of Nocturne, but I need them to release it on the Switch because that's the only way I will be capable of playing through that game. Again. Right? Yeah. Yep. I need to be able to carry that around and uh, in bed, and then also play it on a screen. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Pretty, all like, that. like yeah. my save time on that PS2 game, which did not include pause time because I was in my 20s and dedicated, right? Uh, was like 140 hours or something ridiculous. Oh, like yeah, that. so yep, yeah, <laughs> I, hey. that's it for me. Go back to right. uh, your next game. I'm sorry I took that over. No, you're so, okay. Oh, no worries. It's uh, I really want people to play that game, so like. Just everyone remember, Mina's playing it on hard. I'm playing it on easy and have none of her problems. Right. Um, <laughs> Getting the full spectrum of experiences here. <laughs> but there is a save game plus. Um, I think it's only a 40 hour or so game on like a normal or easy difficulty. Yeah, yeah it's not, where, not like Persona 5 where it's like, all right, get in here for 100 hours. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I think if you're playing on hard where every random encounter is basically a boss fight, like it, it's probably going to add a lot of time, but yeah. it'll be fine. It's still a really, it's a really cool, fun, invented, lighthearted game. Yeah, but. I'm excited to start it soon. Speaking of um, the complete opposite of lighthearted, <laughs> um, <laughs> I purchased and started playing Onanaki. Ah, uh, yeah. Also beat it. Oh. Um, this is a game that has a metric ton of issues with it that I absolutely adore and is nice. also one of the most depressing games ever. <laughs> Um, so the, uh, I keep meaning to look up to see what Onanaki means because they use the word Oni in it. And now I'm wondering like, what does Naki add to it? But right. like, is the title an actual spoiler for the game? But Google so it. this game is obsessed with death. Mm-hmm. Um, so the culture in the game, uh, reincarnation is basically observable science inside this game. Um, and what they have is if someone dies and you grieve for them, then their soul may not go on to be reincarnated. Um, so, like, the game starts with basically you're the kid version of your character and your parents had just died and they're telling this little kid not to grieve um, because their parent, their souls might linger and not be reincarnated for it. Mm. Um, which is a pretty messed up thing <laughs> to tell a kid. Um, it's not funny. I just laugh because it's kind of monstrous yeah um <laughs> uh, so onanaki doesn't really mean anything it's just kind of a shortening of the japanese title which i'm not gonna attempt to pronounce oh okay yeah so the uh you go into the game and you play a y- your character's job is a watcher and what watchers do is they look for lost souls and try to help them to the afterlife mm. uh there are a variety of lost souls uh the kind you actually help are like actual lost souls that have just died recently. They're just looking to like clean up whatever their modern day affairs are. Mm. There's the uh, monster type, which I don't remember what they call, but those are the ones that you wind up fighting and whatnot. And sometimes they'll return to a normal soul after that. Sometimes they just disappear. And then the third type is the play mechanic. And these are uh, called daemons. And these are lost souls who can no longer be reincarnated, but they can't be corrupted into something and oh, okay. they don't remember who they are hmm. um so the way this works mechanically is you there are 10 of them in the game uh you get one you'll have probably all of them by like mid game or something like that uh but like so the first one you get uses a sword for instance so you use a sword and you can learn like they have a pretty elaborate skill tree um 
that you can fill out and get new sword attacks and such like that. And then, like, the second one you get is a spear. And, like, his special attack is like a dragoon, like from Final Fantasy. Oh, cool. Um, and you'll use a spear when you use him. So, like, your entire fighting style, because it's an action RPG, um, is dependent on which one you have equipped. Mm. Um, then they'll bring other whatever buffs and and whatever uh things to the gameplay too but the other thing in their skill tree and i mentioned this when i played the demo on here but they have memories that you can unlock um so they each one i think has four or five memories and they'll basically tell the story of how they died and what trapped them into becoming this lost soul oh cool um and those are all done like in this really cool cinematic style and uh, the music for the game is gorgeous. And, and the music on those sections, I think are really good too. Um, and the, you know, it's all Japanese voice acted, but the voice actors all sound really cool to me too. Um, where the game has tr- problems is um, in really just actually playing it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> The controls aren't super responsive. Like, you'll find... So, each daemon is like a special move, which is something like dodge or dash or jump or block or put up like a bubble shield. And what I found is, unfortunately, at least through the first half of the game, dodging is the primary useful one. Mm. Um, Like... You generally don't want to get the jump guy unless you're just fighting an enemy where you need his special dragoon attack for. Um, like a lot of them, uh, the so they have a fist fighter who basically puts up like a it's almost like a titan shield on on Destiny too, but it's like a big glowy bubble thing, um, and you can unlock it so you can do stuff within the bubble, but it only kind of decreases damage you take from enemies inside the bubble. Oh. Um, and you don't have a dodge or a jump or anything with her, so you're just taking damage. So if you are not um, hitting well, then then it's just not going to work out. And like the other problem is like every time you get a daemon, they start from scratch. So like you may be like five or six skills into your current daemons you have equipped, and you get this new one, and you probably aren't going to use it in the dungeon you're in. Because they have to be leveled up five or six times before they're going to be useful to you. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a good game to grind in either is the other problem with it. Mm. Um, if it if there's just like quick maps you could go to and run through and kill everything and run out, like that would be one thing. And I did that an evening or two. But it, like you need so many of the currency to get through the skill trees of your daemons that... <sighs> Like, by the end of the game, I'd only maxed out two skill trees and therefore only heard two complete stories for these guys. Right. Um, They do have some, like, after-game content, um, but the uh, I I haven't tried any of that yet. Honestly, I kind of made it through the end. I'm like, nah, I'm good. But it's... uh, (laughs) The game, story-wise, through probably the first half of the game, is almost like a really depressing 90s anime. So, Mm. like, back then with, like... I don't know, like Tenshi Muyo or Universe or, uh, gosh, I I wish I could think of another anime, but like they all start out where like the first 10 episodes are not the main story. Yeah. You're just going through and like maybe bits of the main story are in the background that you don't realize are the main story. But for the most part, you're just being introduced to this world and going through things. So this one operates more like a, gosh, almost a unsolved mysteries cold first thing for like, right. each story chunk is a new someone died go help their spirit thing so like right. everything is severely depressing and they are not afraid to go like controversial routes and things oh, okay. like that in terms of um let's see well, without getting too much away like at one point there is a suicide cult you know mm. um but like they're not afraid to kill a kid in the game a lot of kids die in this game. Yeah. Like, and at one point, so there's only probably about five decisions in the game. Like, it takes about 40 hours to get through. Uh, at one point, and I posted it on my Instagram and Facebook, and for some reason it didn't make it to Twitter, but the uh, 
you're talking like, what was it <clears throat> this kid had died and he was worried about his dog and wanted you to go take care of his dog you find the dog the game straight up gives you the option kill the dog oh, <laughs> or unchain the dog it's like what <laughs> who picks the first option right for real like even like in the game's context i'm sure what they like the intention of that is okay we'll kill the dog so the dog can be reincarnated with the kid and they can be together yeah you rejoin them yeah but like Um, it does not come across you still gotta kill a dog man (laughs) no let the dog live a happy life and then reincarnate afterwards how about that i agree and i don't know like i couldn't win I don't know how that concluded because I couldn't find the kid's spirit afterwards, and the dog's the dog was gone. I let him off the leash, and he ran off. So right. I don't know how that ended up. If that was the right thing or wrong thing, it's in my book, right it was the thing. right thing because I did not kill a dog. <laughs> right? <laughs> Holy smokes! But like most of the decisions are not as jarring as that one. Well, okay, a couple of them are... Well, okay, no, nothing is as jarring as (laughs) kill the dog. But, like, you do get some, like... Gosh. You you get some some messed up things happen. Like, mid-game, I didn't actually think was a mid-game. It did a thing, and I'm not going to spoil what that is, but I just thought the game was over. I'm like, okay, this game has been depressing enough. I could see this actually being the ending. Right. Um, But it's... uh, I... I really like this game. I like the idea of it more than the execution, but like the artwork and music are great. I love the idea of the world and kind of exploring um, kind of like I I call it humanity's obsession with death, but no one is obsessed with death as uh, the culture in this game. Right. (laughs) Um, But it's it's just super fascinating. It's uh, it's definitely not for everyone, though. Um, if you don't like, if you don't think you can endure 40 hours of something depressing, right. maybe don't play it. <laughs> well, and there's, I think the, the demo is still available. So if people want to check it out and, and give yeah. it a shot, I think that gives a real good impression of, of how that game is going to be throughout its 40 hours. Yeah. And that, um, your progress can carry from the demo. Like it gave me that oh, right. option when I started the game, but it'd been too long and I'd forgotten too much. So I just started right. it over. Um, but, um, and then, uh, lastly, uh, I started judgment the other night, which is oh yeah, definitely not an RPG, but falls into our Japan Yakuza section of, the, I don't know. The Yakuza series is, uh, an RPG. So I, th- I think judgment is, does it have like the same leveling up skills system that Yakuza does? So I've only played Yakuza Zero. Okay. Um. So Yakuza Zero had the uh, that wheel where you're spending yeah. the money. Yeah. Yeah. So this it just gives you a screen with like a bunch of skills and you get skill points that you can. Spend hey, I on think that counts. <laughs> but I don't, it's a like it feels like a yakuza meets sleeping dogs without the driving game to me yeah, so far. Yeah, more lawyering. <laughs> yeah. And I it's goofy but I, I really enjoy it. Like you get a drone and they have like this mini game of find the pertinent detail in the picture or nice. find the thing with the drone and um I really enjoy that. I kind of just put it on the easy so I could, you know, beat the crap out of people and get through it. Um, yeah. The protagonist seems real likable. There's a I don't know if I zoned out in the intro or what, but I'm so, so like the game starts out and you are your character protagonist. Um, hold on. I pulled up his name. Uh, Takayuki mm-hmm. uh, Yagami. So he's a lawyer, right? He's a lawyer who has won a case, which is almost unheard of because no one ever wins cases uh, defending people in Japan. Um, and so he was celebrating, considering his next case. And then he got a phone call that the guy he just got proven innocent of murder went home and stabbed his girlfriend (laughs) great and i think i'm 90 percent sure they mean that the serial killer guy killed his own girlfriend but like part of me wonders like do they mean they killed takayuki's girlfriend they can't he's not acting depressed enough oh sure right so i'm not i'm not clear on that detail but anyway the game skips ahead three years and you're now a detective um and some of your clients are Yakuza, so, like, the Tojo clan is in the city, you know? Yeah. Like, they're they're Yakuza 
game elements and stuff in there. Um, and it's set in Camarocho, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh I'm really enjoying it so far, but I'm I'm barely anywhere. Like uh they have not turned me loose. Um gosh, there really isn't a whole lot to it. So right now uh, I have two fighting styles, one of them for a crowd, one of them for a single um they have uh i forget what they call them uh you have like a meter that fills up and then you can press triangle at certain points and it will do like an extra special ex move that's what they're called your limit break (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. pretty much (laughs) um but there are a bunch of them and like they're very cinematic in how they go like in such Mm. a way like one of them i ran up a wall and then hit the button and i was fighting like three or four guys and like he tackled one guy and hit another guy and then another, like it was like, but it was done cinematic style. It wasn't like, it right. Was, yeah. They have those, those guys in the Yakuza series where you hit triangle sometimes and you can do like a special move too. And it's like the camera's swinging around yeah. and you're throwing a motorcycle at like five people. And it's like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember the motorcycle part from zero, but yeah. like I never played six. So I, I right. think that's, this game is on the Yakuza six engine. I think so, and I think they carried it over to seven as well. Gotcha. Yeah, but I don't, I'm really enjoying it. It's a it's a fun world. Uh, Takayuki, I think, is a really likable protagonist. Um, I think the last mission I did was, uh, oh, we got to talk to this guy on the top floor. Oh, we got to sneak in. So I disguised myself as a HVAC repair man <laughs> and uh, went in the building and snuck until i couldn't snuck and whatever however that sentence is supposed to go work right. and <laughs> beat the crap out of a dozen yakuza and then uh found the main guy so yeah but that game looks there. cool that is uh all of, well i guess there's a game club game this is the police which i would argue is an rpg but we will talk about that in uh two weeks yeah there you go. I got to play more of that. Um, I have been playing just a metric ton of Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions. Um, this game is turning out to be way longer than I was expecting it to, and I'm loving every minute of it. Um, I finished the first character's story. I don't think I talked about that last month. Um, <coughs> but I finished her story, and um, the final boss of her story was really good because it was really difficult. Um, For most encounters, if you have like a multi-stage encounter, it'll tell you before you get into it, say like, this one's easy. It'll have an arrow and say, this one's normal and next one's normal. This one was three hard battles back to back, but for each battle, you would knock down the boss and then it would get back up and you'd have to knock it down twice per fight. Um, and then actually three times at the in the last phase. Um, so it turned into this cool thing where, unlike normally, where you try and buff and debuff a bunch and kind of poison and make sure that you have, you're defending as much as you can, you're really just pushing the DPS as fast as you can to try and get through these really tough fights. Um, so I really liked that you really needed to take advantage of everything that you've trained your party members on for the entire game and kind of maximize all that stuff for this really, really tough fight. Um, so finish that and um, started another, um, uh, the next character's playthrough that I chose, I picked um, Taria. Um, she was probably not the best selection for my second one because she's doing very similar stuff from the, the this previous playthrough I played through um, which makes sense from a story standpoint but from a gameplay standpoint sort of like oh, let's do this this scavenger hunt again um, hers has been really interesting because she has three distinct chapters that sort of all end in this splash screen it's like oh, let's go back home whoops nothing's fixed um at the end of her first chapter was really interesting because you have to fight this boss. And if you remember, I was talking about unity attacks where your party members, if they smush together, they do this big attack and they do a ton of damage to the enemy. Um, you really want to prevent 
your enemies from doing that. So if like if there's three enemies in a row and you kill the middle one, the two are going to smush together and they're going to do a ton of damage on your party. The crazy thing about this fight is you have to do you have to make your enemies do those unity attacks to defeat the boss. So what happens is you get those uh get the enemies to do these unity attacks and then the boss absorbs the enemies and eventually like overheats and then runs away but it's cool to kind of some of the bosses in the game have you do such different things like this where it's like okay how do i how do i move my my characters and the enemies around the screen so i can get them into into a position i never want them to be to do the thing I don't want them to do to successfully beat this boss. Um, and it was, it's one of those things where like I had to try three or four times. He's like, God, they're just, they're killing me. Cause I'm not, I'm not fighting the boss the right way. I'm just trying to defeat it. And you can't do any damage to the boss. So you have to, you have to do this system. Um, Saga's Crazy Ambitions is, is really, really good. And I, I'm, I'm at the final boss on the second character. I'm a little under leveled, so I have to do a little bit of grinding uh, to get my mostly my my HP up. Um, but man, I just I'm I'm trying to not do the thing I usually do, where it's like, ah, oh, this game is so good, and I'm really enjoying it. And then Tokyo Mirage Sessions comes out, so I'll just start that, <laughs> and then I have like quarter finished games laying in my wake. Um, I really like this game and I, I really love the saga series. So I want to see this through to the end. And once I beat this final boss, I'll be halfway through. Um, I, I think, I don't know if it's, we're going to do one of those things where it's like the four characters and then a fifth chapter, which would be totally cool. Um, but yes, Saga Scar of Grace Ambitions, it's out on a whole bunch of stuff. It's out on basically everything except for Xbox One, if you want to check it out. It's really great. Uh, but that's all I'm playing. So let's, uh, it seems like we have a lot of releases and news stories this month, but a lot of them are kind of uh, kind of quick. So let's <coughs> let's blow through these. Uh, RPG releases for February 2020. The, the game with the longest title in 2020, I can almost guarantee is the game I'm looking forward to the most. Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Re- Resistance Tactics comes out for <laughs> PC, OS X, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One on the 4th. Um, if you wanted a, f- a brand new Final Fantasy Tactics that just has a different skin on it, uh, this is the game you're looking for. Uh, I forgot this thing was happening until yeah. I opened our sheet up. I'm, <laughs> I gotta find some money for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still don't know how much it is. I, I, I'm I hoping it's around the $20 um, price range, because as soon as this comes out, I'm definitely going to pick it up. Probably for PS4, uh, maybe for Switch, but I haven't been playing my Switch too much lately. Um, but I, all the videos and the developer walkthroughs and stuff I've seen for this so far have been, hey, we love Final Fantasy Tactics, and there hasn't been one in a really long time, so we're going to go make one. And it just has this license associated with it. So job systems, the whole they just took everything. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, check it out when it comes out. It 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 looks really good. Uh, speaking of Yakuza, the remastered collection comes out on PS4 on the 11th. So Yakuza remastered three and four are already out digitally. On the 11th, the fifth will be out digitally, and the physical collection of three, four, and five will be out at the same time. Um, so the, the physical edition comes with a bunch of tchotchkes and stuff and comes with the game on disc. And it also, it comes with a copy of Yakuza 5's PS3 box. There's no disc in it. Well, maybe the collection of discs is in it. I don't know, but we only got Yakuza 5 digitally here. So we never got a box. So you could never complete it was one through four and oh. then six. So you could. I was confused. I was yeah. like, why? Why would they? And then, yeah. When they okay, announced it, I was like, why would you put five's box? And then I had to think. I was like, oh, right. Because it only. Yeah, that was a PS3 digital only thing. So that that's fun. Good job, Sega. They're having fun with the, the series. I like it. Uh, Darksiders Genesis finally comes to consoles on <clears throat> Switch, PS4, and Xbox One on the 14th. Uh, this is the Darksiders uh, hack and slash Diablo game uh, that I hear is is pretty good, so I'm probably also gonna pick that up. <laughs> ha, so expensive. 
Uh, Snack World, the Dungeon Crawl Gold comes out on Switch on the 14th. Um, I cannot believe we're getting the Snack World game. Here's Level 5's uh, RPG series that for some reason never came out over here. And uh, they're remaking it for Switch and uh, adding a whole bunch of extra stuff. And this game is supposed to be really good. Um, so, although I don't, I don't know an entire lot about it other than level 5 RPG really good so I'd, that's, about, that's about all I need to know so uh, check that out um, here's some good news for you Persona 5 Scramble comes out on the Switch on the 20th this are is the you pers- sure that's sorry are you sure that's a US release date for this I thought so yeah. Let's, uh, I, I didn't think we'd actually gotten announced here because I've been keeping my eye out for the pre-order and I haven't seen it mm. man so, well, um, well, we'll talk about the next one while Musum does some research here. Rune Factory 4 Special comes out on the Switch on the 25th. Mina's game of all time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Finally I am coming out. So, I am so excited. They just announced the release date like within the past month. It's and, and I've been waiting for that release date because they already had like they had your pre order and everything. And it's been month, months and months. I'm just like. Just I need the date. Yeah. But um, I'm so excited. For for those of you who um, haven't heard me talk and talk about how, like, if you're going to get a 3DS game and you're just like, I don't know what to get. Room Factory 4 was a, like, <laughs> a must buy on my, on my games list. It's like, you have to get this game. Yeah. And... I'm so thrilled, not just because like Rune Factory 4 Special is coming out on the Switch, because now people who have said, well, I don't own a 3DS, you own a Switch. Right, Surely. everyone owns a Switch. <laughs> Surely you own a Switch, so yeah. now there's no excuse, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but um, but the, the biggest news about this whole thing is the fact that they haven't let that IP die. Yeah. And that's what what really mattered to me, because... The way Rune Factory 4 ended with the the shutting of the doors of um, Neverland, whatever it was called, Neverland, yeah, I whatever. What they were called, yeah. Um, just I I thought I thought for sure I was like I'll, I might never get another Rune Factory, and that was the saddest thought of, because they they went out with a bang, like the sales were like triple or four times the expected <clears throat> amount for that game, and. It is one of their best-selling games, and I was like, "You're gonna end like this, right? You're you ending on top." <laughs> Don't. No, we gotta. We gotta have more. You can't yeah. do this to me. So, um, Rune Factory Four Special. Even if you've already like, even if you already owned it for the 3DS, I really, really recommend getting the uh, the the Switch version because they are adding a lot of new content. Yeah, and just in general, it looks pretty graphically. It looks good. really good. Better. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and plus, please support this game because I, <laughs> I need more Rune Factory. Yeah. Got to bring five over here. <laughs> I need yeah. five. I need six. I need ten. Yeah. You know, keep them keep coming. This going. <laughs> okay. uh, Musim's right. The Persona Five Scramble does not come out in the U.S. Uh, right now. I missed the little letter A on the Wikipedia page that says this game is coming out in Japan only on this date. We don't have a release date yet, so. Uh, I'll get it. But it'll it'll definitely uh, Atlas has said it definitely is coming out in North America. It's just we don't have a release date yet. So Okay. Good. We'll yeah. get it. Knowing our luck probably March twenty third, twenty twenty. Please give me more space. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about uh news stories here. A little PSA. The uh Outer Worlds launches on Switch in March. Um normally we would just talk about this next month when it comes out, but uh it's getting one of those horrible f- Switch physical releases that I hate, which is just a box with a code inside. Um, so be warned that it's not really getting a physical release. It just buy the digital one as it is anyway. Also, <clears throat> game didn't run super great on consoles. So if you're interested in this, you might want to hold off on it for a little bit just to see how it performs on Switch. Not saying they won't get it there, but, you know, the Obsidian games can be a little bit hard on consoles and Switches. Switch is a little uh, underpowered compared to the other ones, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Obsidian outsourced it too, so. Okay. Maybe they'll outsource it to someone like Iron Galaxy and it'll be fine. That'd be uh, nice. 
Yeah. Uh, Torchlight Frontiers has been rebranded as Torchlight 3. Um, I don't I don't know if we talked about Frontiers before or if we have. It's been a while. But um, Torchlight Frontiers was the their free-to-play version of Torchlight. Uh, they had a closed alpha f- a while ago, and basically the overwhelming feedback that people in the closed alpha gave Perfect World Entertainment was, this isn't great. You just need to make Torchlight 3. And they are. <laughs> Which is kind of the news story we never get. Instead of like, oh, well, we're really committed to gaming. It's just like, all right, we heard you. Like, you didn't like this thing. We're going to turn it into <laughs> basically like follow the structure and the features and the characters and everything of Torchlight. And we're just going to we're gonna make it into Torchlight 3. It's like, that's that's fantastic. And it's coming out this summer. So... All good news all around. Uh, Fantasy Star Online 2's closed beta is upcoming. The uh, now 8-year-old game? Uh, 12-year-old game? Something like that? Um, it's much... It's got to be an older game than that. I yeah. remember people talking about it. Like, uh, it I was... No, it's not 8 years old. It came out in 2008. That's that's what yeah. I got confused about. It's a 12-year-old like, game. Yeah, It's been... <laughs> it's been so forever. Long. Yeah. Uh, the closed beta uh, is available via the Xbox Insider Hub app on Xbox One. Boy, that's a lot of words. Uh, you can load the demo on your Xbox One on the 3rd, and you will only be able to play it on the 7th and, like, the morning of the 8th. So if you want to get in there and you want to try it, you have a very short window uh, next weekend to do so. <laughs> tiny window. Yeah. Uh, But uh, as of right now, if anyone doesn't remember the announcement, as of right now, it's only going to be on Xbox One in the U.S. It won't be region locked, and it will have all of the features, all of the current features and content from the the Japanese version. And Microsoft says they're open to bringing it to other platforms in the future. Please. Fingers crossed. Uh, Speaking of freeing up March 23rd, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 has been pushed back to September. Uh, CD Projekt Red put out a whole big thing saying like, hey, it's it's just not done. Uh, it's not done. It's not polished. I think they said they can, you can play through it from front to end. So it's kind of content complete. They just got to gotta buff all the edges on it. And they're, they're giving us some more space in the first quarter, which is really great. Uh, alongside that, Final Fantasy VII Remake delayed to April. It's April... 10th i believe uh f- yeah yes uh from march 3rd to april 10th so it's only a lot you know a couple of weeks um and they uh they basically said the same thing on that one that um you know they just need a little bit a little bit more time to to wrap that bad boy up uh so if you haven't seen the brand new trailer that came out this week of final fantasy VII Maybe remake who it's hot <laughs> that's the good stuff that's uh, I, for a long time I was like I don't know I don't know if we really it should be fine and then like the last couple of trails they put out have been real good, so <laughs> really looks like to go past Midgar to me in that trailer I got to be honest with you like there's a little bit of stuff in there that may, might be later yeah and I don't who the heck's the guy on the motorcycle who says hi to Cloud uh, he I think he's from the first one but he shows up for like five minutes. He's like one of those Shinra employees where it's like, who, why am I fighting this guy? Oh, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> he's probably like one of the dudes you fight on the freeway where it's like, oh, this guy oh. has a name? Like, why is this Maybe guy? Maybe he's the guy you race or something. Like, don't you have to <laughs> race something? I think somewhere? so, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in that game. Uh, and last but not least, I just want to put out a plug. I'm not associated with it all, but Final Fantasy Tactics Battleground on uh, Twitch. It's like Salty Bet for Final Fantasy Tactics. So basically, there's a randomly generated set of teams, and they fight in a. Uh, there's people don't remember this, but there's an AI battling system in Tactics, um, so you can just set two parties against each other, and the AI will fight. So basically, <laughs> a program generates a whole bunch of teams. They, the AI is used to fight. They work through kind of a a ladder in a tournament, um, and you can bet fake money on. Um, which teams will win, and uh, you can, if you're lucky, you can spend some money to buy skills for individual party members. And I have been watching it a lot for like the last 
three or four weeks. Uh, if I'm not doing anything, it's kind of just up on my computer or my TV. Uh, and it's <laughs> it's a blast to watch. It's it's a really great time. So uh, check it out. Uh, it's FFT Battleground on Twitch. Um, and with that, that's our episode for this month. Thank you so much for listening. PickingUpThePixels.com is where you can find us. Right-hand side of the page is uh, where you can find and follow us. Um, Musim, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on my audio hub at jbaudio.net. Uh, they'll have links to my music on iTunes and all those other places. A brand new podcast themes album right now, out right now. Go <laughs> go check it out. Go buy it. Or stream it, but that doesn't make him as much money. <laughs> so go buy it. <laughs> uh, Mino, Give me 5 to $10 or one one-thousandth of a cent. Your that's choice. right. That's right. The choice is clear. <laughs> uh, Mina, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitch or on YouTube under Mina K.O. Rocket. And you can find me at e1m1.com, patreon.com slash e1m1. And thank you very much for listening. Our adventure continues next month. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.